sure you there is no one that cannot fall. So we have to be very careful. When we're dealing with someone that has fallen, uh, and like I said, has come back for restoration, it says, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's which is the law of love. Bear you one another's burdens. Try to help him. Uh, try, try your best to lessen the load and the heartache that he has. The shame or whatever it might be. There's a way that you can restore him, that you can help him find his way back. I promise you. I promise you there's a way. And it seems a lot of times that those that are spiritual seem to be the first ones to jump on him. Or ones, those that profess to be spiritual, seems to be the ones that jump on him the hardest and the quickest. Which is completely reversed from what we're supposed to be. You know, if somebody does come to me with a fault, I can bring them, I can tear them right on down. You know, uh, to nothing. Uh, if I so desire to do so. And a lot of times, those that are uh, in a uh, condition uh, or profess to be in a spiritual condition to help somebody are full of self-righteousness. And they don't necessarily want to help him out. They want to make their self look good at his expense. A lot of times, they're the first ones that begin to talk about him or her and put them down. And, or be the ones that did make out like they were trying to restore him and really weren't, but was looking for glory from other people. You know, if you're in the process of <clears throat> trying to help somebody like that in this condition, you really don't have to broadcast it at all. You, you don't have to go and talk about it with anybody else. Keep it to yourself. And if the Lord opens the door for them or someone else to do the same thing and restore it, Somebody has to let, let God do that. That's right. Let God do that. You do what God's called, the part you called you to do. He called you to do. And then let it alone. You, 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 you know, God has a way of doing that. And he has a group of people here uh, that are supposed to be spiritual enough to accomplish this. It's what a church is. Yeah. And, and uh, like I said, regardless of how hard far they've fallen, be willing to say, you know what? It don't matter. It don't matter. God forgive you. We can forgive you. Start all over again. No matter who it is, what they've done. If they're willing to repent. If they uh, come to you with a broken and contrite heart. It says, For if a man thinketh himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. He deceives himself. And when we get up on a high horse, we're just looking to be knocked off. There's nobody belongs on a high horse uh, in this congregation above anybody else. That's not the way God intends us to be. It says, but let every man look at this. The verse down here said, bear ye one another's burdens. And then now verse 4 says, but let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone. Let every man, or for every man, shall bear his own burden. And it just said down there, you bear his burden, one another's burden. And now it's saying, let him bear his own burden. But listen, there, there, there's two different burdens here to, to, to bear. There is that first burden that he's trying to be delivered from. You're in the process of helping him be delivered from that. That's carrying that burden. But then also, too, there is a self burden that he has to deal with that only he can bear. You know, his time with God or carrying out the full process of being restored and all. There's things there that we must carry along to God. Because it's just between us and God. So, so not only expecting someone to help me with my burden, also realizing I have a burden that I myself.
myself have to carry and get forgiveness for and work with God with. Let every man who is taught in the word, I love this, communicate unto him who teaches in all good things. Let him who is taught in the word, as refers to the act of receiving instruction, let this one that has received instruction communicate unto him who teaches in all things. Let's not make the load of the God-called teacher heavier by hindering him in some way, but rather let us encourage him. If there's a way that we can make the burden easy, a lot of times we find out things or we come across things that we that God leads us to help take care of and rather than doing that we find someone else and pour it off on them when God had intended us to deal with it you know uh, and a lot of times that one that we carried it to to dump it off on he's the one that everybody does that way and he's toting a whole bunch of them so anytime that you can see that you have grips on whatever the thing is, and you have grips on it, deal with it yourself. Amen. Find out from God how He wants you to deal with it. Let Him lead you through it instead of putting it on someone else. Instead of putting it on someone else. This is the, the, the book that we're about to go through now. Is verses that I've preached all my life, and boy, have I seen them fulfilled time after time. I mean, this, these verses that I'm going to share with you right now, these are a guarantee. These are an innate law of God, the law of sowing and reaping. It's an innate law of God. It's going to happen. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. It's coming back. It's coming back. So we, as God's people, need to realize going this way that what it, whatever we're doing is coming back to us. And whatever we sow, we're going to reap. It says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he who sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. What a blessed thought that I understand the difference in sowing in the Spirit and sowing in the flesh. The flesh when it comes back, flesh going this way, working the work of God without God's help, ain't doing nothing but causing problems. And problems are coming back. Why? Because flesh tried to settle it themselves. Flesh tried to work out a spiritual problem without the help of the Spirit. And boy, that thing backfires so often. So many people begin to think, well, I've got, a, you know, I've got enough experience in this area that I'm just going to blow right through this, you know, and I know exactly what to say, and I know exactly how to handle this, and, and, and they had no time in prayer, no time talking to the Lord about it, no time getting any direction from God. I'm just going to do it myself. And like I said, oh boy, a lot of times you ain't even get home before that you took care of outside of the porch. It's already blown up. Why? Spirit wasn't in it. Was it time to do whatever you did? The timing was wrong. Or whatever you said was wrong. But you did it in the flesh. There's a lot of times that it would be better to just say, when someone is asking for help like that, and you don't know what to do, is just to say, I don't know what to do. Let me pray for you. And I'll try to get help from God 
And I'll be praying, you know. But I don't know all the answers. I don't know how to get out of everything. I don't know the resolution to every problem, but I know the one that does. I know Jesus will take care of you. But for me to just spit out a bunch of advice without even praying about it, I'm going to hold off on that. I'm going to hold back and let God work His work. You know, because I'm not ready. I wasn't ready for that question. I didn't come to church and, and, and go through the service and go through the preaching, come out here on the porch and get blasted with, with something way up there uh, and spiritually that, 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 that's going to take a lot of prayer and a lot of closeness with God. I can't answer it right now. So let me think about it. Let me pray about it. Let me God, get God in it. Because I want God glorified. I don't need any of the, the glory for it. But I really want to be a help to you. And I'll have to get God's help to do that. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. You need, you need to, to remember that. And listen, it don't hurt to say, you know what? I think, I think you should go to the pastor and ask him. Tell him, I'm not going to the pastor for you. But my advice, since it's over my head, since it's beyond me and I don't really know the answer, readily know the answer, we got a pastor back there that if he don't know the answer, he'll get the answer. He can talk to God and get the answer for the people of his church. This is his flock. This is his, this is his people that God has put him over to watch over spiritually. And when they're in need and have a problem, go talk to him. Go talk to him. And there's nothing you can't talk to me about. Amen. Nothing you can't talk to me about. And I'll find you the answer. We'll, we'll, get to, we'll get to the problem. But he says in the verse 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we think not. He said, listen, don't you be, don't be fearful of doing what's right. And don't worry about the reward. It's coming. The blessing's coming. God doesn't overlook when you deserve a blessing. You ain't got to go to God and try to hold Him accountable to blessing you. When you be a blessing, He'll give you a blessing. Amen. You don't have to say nothing to Him about it. You don't have to remind him that he's three blessings behind. Right? You don't have to remind God of that. Because there's no blessings really, if that's the reason you were doing it anyhow, there's really no blessings being added up. Amen. If you were doing it for your own glory and not for the benefit of, of, of the person or, or for the glory of God. It says, as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men. Let us do good unto all men. Let us take out of our vocabulary the things that will hurt, uh, the things that will destroy, the things that will hinder. Let us take those out of our vocabulary. And let's be very careful uh, to make sure that we're not hurting without even knowing what we're doing. I've seen people take off down a path uh, in trying to help somebody or trying to explain something to somebody or trying to get some, somebody out of trouble. And I've seen them head off down the wrong direction and have messed that person's life up for I don't know how long before they can return to a sane place. But they were taking advice from somebody that didn't know but would like to be the somebody that knows. But they're not. They're not. And a lot of times we all love to take credit for knowing something that we don't know. And listen, if you don't know it, you don't know it. The way that God teaches you, and then you'll know. And then you can use it to benefit other people. You see how large a letter I have written unto you with my own hand? Paul said, listen, usually he has scribes to, to, to write down whatever he dictates. But Paul said, listen, this is my pen. This is my letter. I wrote this one myself. 
And he said, look how big of a letter. He said, this stuff is important that I'm telling you today. This stuff is important. And it is one of those agents that's in conducting a church that tells you how to do it. That tells you the right way to do it. And a lot of times when a church gets in a tilly, a chisel or whatever you want to call it, a schism, when it gets a schism in it, most of the time it's because of misinformation or somebody thinking they know something that they really don't know and they just picked up on some gossip somewhere and they didn't even pick up on all of that. And now they're trying to straighten everything out with half the story. And it's making matters worse. It's making matters worse. And the Bible talks about people that will sow discord among the brethren. You have to be careful when you're sowing discord among the brethren. A lot of people don't know what that means. But what it means is this. Getting anybody in the church at odds with anybody else. Yeah, but I'm right about them. Not your job to go tell everybody in the church what this guy's doing or that guy's doing. That's not your job. And if that's the only benefit or only help that you can add to it, stay out of it. You're just damaging everything. And God's work is not done like that. God's people don't do God's work like that. And a lot of times when you get a really carnal church, a church that's really carnal and and those that have abandoned the direction of the Spirit. Man, it's a terrible mess. It looks like a bunch of hyenas that's been gnawing on each other behind when church is over. And everybody runs out the door like a hyena. You know how the racket they are going to try to make it, but they make a racket. And they run out the door like a hyena. And you go in there and look, and there's little blood spots everywhere where everybody has got them a bite or got them a tear on somebody and that's not a church no. that's not a church but listen there's a many a churches in this land today that that's how it works that's how it works and you have to be careful or we will be one of those churches going on to verse 12 as many as desire to make a fair showing in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. Only, lest they should suffer persecution for the cross's sake. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. First off, circumcision is nothing now. Counts nothing. There was a bunch of Judaizers that came into the church and trying to convince those that had not been circumcised that now they are saved, now they have to get circumcised. Mm -hmm. and, and Paul has done told them, you don't, don't do that. Don't do that. There, there's nothing to your circumcision. That you're, that you're, you're not special with God because you've been circumcised. That was under the law. We're no longer under the law. We're operating under grace now. So you that are trying to push somebody into doing something uh, that you yourself don't do right is wrong for you to do. Regardless, it doesn't have to be circumcision. It can be something that is godly or something that is scriptural that they're not ready for right now. And you don't need to be trying to push people into things that they're not ready for. God call them. Let God call them. See? Uh, uh, let God work the church like He intended to work the church. You know? Uh, and people don't agree with. I've heard so much clattering through the years uh, about how I do 
uh, positions for next year. If you feel led of God to do it, sign up. If you don't feel led of God to do it, don't let nobody talk to you and put your name down when you don't want to put it. And if you put it there and are out on the outs with the Lord or have known sin in your life or, 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 or contrary uh, to, to somebody that's supposed to be doing that, if I call you down, if I go and talk to you and say, look, hey, come on now. You don't come to church for about once every three months. And then when you do, you don't do anything but cause trouble. And now you're going to sign up to be a teacher? Are you on a position for next year? Come on. You can't do that. You can't do that. I can't allow you to do that as pastor. So then I'll, but it's not to her. And listen, I always offer say, look, why don't you start out? If you really want to start out one year, be in somebody's assistant. Let's see how that goes. Look, two years maybe, whatever. Whatever God be, try that. Try that. Rather than, because listen to me, there's a lot of people that just don't understand apparently that to take a position and, and quit in the middle of the year, how bad that hurts that class. Amen. It causes a lot of hurt. To that class, I don't care if it ain't but a half a dozen people in there or three or four, whatever it is. If you've taken that position, see it through Amen. with with joy. Don't carry your problems to your class. Carry, carry up there the lesson. Carry the lesson to your to your people, not your problems, not your burdens. You're supposed to be the one that's teaching them how to get lifted out of those burdens. So don't carry the problems in your life to the class. Don't carry your problems in your life or in the church to the class. That's not the place to get it worked out. When talk like that begins to go on in a Sunday school class, it's time to stop the talk. That Sunday school class has not been appointed to straighten the church out. Okay? They can't do that. You can't do that. And a lot of times we'll get ourselves uh, in a corner, in a, in a mess, trying to take care of the issues in the church in one particular Sunday school class or uh, one group of people. Can't do that. You know why? That makes the problem bigger than it was. It adds to the problem. It makes it bigger now than it was. So you have to do those things the right way. It says, if many have desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised when they themselves ain't even doing what they're supposed to be doing. He said, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Say no glory in anything, glory in the cross. That's it. That's the only that's the only thing we anyhow got the right to glory in. Bring all the glory to him. And if what I'm doing in my Sunday school class isn't glorifying God, cut it off. Cut that thing off. That's what it's there for. To bring honor and glory to his name. Listen to me. When your class gets about bringing honor and glory to his name, it will fill up in no time. Why? Because there are people of God that know that that's what a Sunday school class is supposed to be doing. And when they go in one and they find one that's doing that, buddy, they don't miss. They're there every Sunday. Why? Because they've been looking for that for years. They have gone to Sunday school class after Sunday school class after Sunday school class after church after church after church. And Sunday school classes get carried on in the stupidest ways that I have ever seen in my life. Just crazy. It's not even a Sunday school class. 
Sunday school class. I don't know what you call it. I don't know what you call it. But it ain't a Sunday school class. And you can let the thing get so out of control that it ain't nothing but a ticking bomb. A ticking bomb ready to go off at any time. Why? Because the focus has gotten on people instead of on Christ. When it gets on people and not Jesus, it's going down the wrong road. You're, you're causing trouble you can't handle. You're talking about doing things in the flesh. You can't do things in the flesh. You've got to do it with the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Y'all keep on amen to me because this ain't easy to preach. This ain't easy to preach. But I'm not scared to preach it. Amen. But it sure does help me when you encourage me with an amen every now and then. Amen? That's what I need. Amen. Because I ain't preaching nothing wrong. I'm preaching what's right. And as long as I'm preaching right, I need to get some amen. Amen. Verse number 15, I'm almost through. I've got three, more, three or four more verses. It says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor non-circumcision, but a new creature. That's what makes the difference. Is there a new creature in that? I'm worried about your circumcision or non-circumcision. I'm worried about are you a true child of God? Are you a born-again believer? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you here for the glory of the Lord? Are you here for His cause? Are you here to see more people get saved? Amen. Is that what you're here for? Then get in that, get in that little pothole. Amen. And make all the waves you want to in that one. Because that's the one that needs to get stirred up good. Win and lost people to Christ. That's the one that ought to have waves going back and forth in it all the time. Because somebody's in there splashing around trying to get somebody else saved. And then you're about to get them baptized. They got them by the foot. And if they can drag them on in there, they can get them baptized. Amen. They're that close. They got them by the foot and one knee's in there. To get a little closer, you can dump them. Amen. But, and he says, and as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. He said, this is the answer. This is how you walk. And he said, if you walk like this, peace will be on you. You know, you, can you believe this? There are some people that go to church just to fuss. Just to fuss. And carry on some all the time. Oh, y'all don't know any? <laughs> I can give you a list of names if you want me to. <laughs> Amen. I got a road down right here. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the list right now. Amen. But I ain't going to start no trouble about giving you the list. Amen. Because I ain't got no racer up here to get your name off of before I get Man, got no racer up here. Amen. As many as walk according to, to this rule, peace be on them and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth, let no man trouble you or trouble me. From henceforth, let no man trouble me. I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. The, every one of us bear that are saved bear the marks of the Lord Jesus in our bodies. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Amen. And that's good teaching. Amen. That's good stuff right there. If we use that, God can settle a whole lot of differences and a whole lot of scribbles and squabbles. Of course, see, I, I, I don't, you know, I know they, what you say, 21, 24 little schisms right now. 
in the church. But I don't fool with none of that. I don't fool. I think it's 24. Right there? 24? Schism? In the church? How many of you in? You give me how many you're in, I can tell them the number for sure. 23. So you're 23 out of 24, okay? That's what I thought was 24 because I knew one that you wasn't in. I've been thanking God for that one all day. But so, but you know, like I said, it's been, I don't get involved in them, but I try to direct the people that are involved in them out of them. I do my best to direct and I don't mean to, well, what you say about me, you ought to be getting madder than that. God didn't call me to get mad. Right. You don't want to see me mad. Amen. I can't, you don't want to see me mad. I don't, that, and that, that's not the way you do God's work anyway. But you won't, you won't see me mad. And you certainly won't see me dishonor this pulpit by getting up here and acting out right. in some mad, crazy, I've seen some crazy preachers, boy. Throw books at people and everything else. Yeah, I'm talking about losing. I've seen some one pull a butcher knife about that alone on the congregation in a business meeting. Whooped out a knife for about a 16 inch long blade on that dude. They had to call the law, drag him out of the pulpit. That's right. But that's not the way God intended for us. To conduct ourselves, you know. And we don't do it in anger. And like I said, this place up here is so special and sacred to me that I'm not going to dishonor this right here. Now, I'll take you out in the parking lot out there and poke your eyes out if you don't leave me alone. But I won't do it up here. I, that, I, that's the truth. I won't, I won't dishonor him up here. Because, like I said, this is a sacred place. This is a place to do God's business and speak for the Lord. And it's a very important place to me and it's the greatest honor and privilege of my life. If y'all knew where I come from, for God to have me up here is the greatest thing in the world to me. It's the greatest gift I've ever gotten besides my salvation alone. Compared to that, that's the only thing that I can say that's above the honor of being up here. Listen to me. The pastor said to me, I would have to step down to be president. Amen. I have to come down a little bit. I, yeah, I have to come down to be where he is. This is the highest honor that a man can have. Amen. Highest honor Amen. that a man can have. Amen. And that's why I Consider it so and think you should be respectful of God and of people when you're up here. You know? So let's, let's take in, take in, be a good read for you right there. That last chapter of the book of Galatians will be a good read for you in your, in your private time. God, speak to me. Speak to me that I might become one of these. I want to become one of these. Reread the thing when you get home and say, God, show me how to be one of these. Let's stand. Charlie, y'all come do one verse or a couple verses.